Am I looking at you? You're looking at me. Okay. <laughs> Hey, it's Thomas Mulready from CoolCleveland.com, and we're here today at the Cleveland Public Library in downtown Cleveland, Ohio, with Connie Schultz. Thanks so much for taking time to talk, Connie. Happy to be here. You know, I'm so happy to be talking with you. Congratulations, Ooh. first of all, on the election. Thank you. You weren't elected. Your husband was. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> but it was a big deal for you, wasn't it? It was Connie, a huge personally. deal. Yeah, of course it was. Big deal for the country. Yeah, and we're really grateful to Ohio. It, yeah. Yeah, you're going to get me crying here at the beginning of this interview already. <laughs> well, don't get me crying. I know. It's, I mean, it's very emotional still. It was huge. And, and Cuyahoga County was huge in that election, was it not? Yes. I mean, not to toot our own horn, but it seemed like it came it right came down to this county. It came through big time for sure. Yeah. It really did, which I, well, I would say they came through big time for the country. For the country. Yeah. Yeah. How different was it from the from the, your first election in 06? It seems like this was so much more bitter. Uh, you said you were the number one target of the Republican Sherrod Party. Sherrod was the number one target of outside money. Uh, more than 40 million. 40 million. Yep. How do you deal with that personally? I mean, just on a personal level, when, at, at night when the two of you are sitting and going, what do we do to deserve this? Well, Sherrod had a great attitude about it because, you know, I was the, it was my responsibility. The campaign would call me with every new buy we found out about. And so I would call Sherrod and, I'd, and he'd answer, what? How much is it, baby? And I'd say, it's 1.2 million. And he'd say, who's it from? And I'd say, Carl Rove. And he'd say, all right. <laughs> That's how we dealt with it. <laughs> so you were you were the bearer of bad news for your husband because they didn't want to deal with well and I that? yeah and, and we it was all about timing and when to tell him and we just made it a game for ourselves because it got crazy it was just crazy you know the amount of money it was more than a game though this was really a, a, a about values we talk about this oh, but it was really sure. a stark difference between your value system and that if anyone that knows you come from a working class family Ashtabula and and versus a totally different worldview almost. Well, and it was really hard sometimes to hear his opponent talk about his working class roots mm. um, because he would talk about his grandparents, which of course I respect, but I come from the working class. Right. I know the difference. When you come from the working class and you're the first in your family to go to college, you had better be fighting for the people you come from. And that, so that was personally challenging at times, but I kept it to myself. Except poor Sherry, got an earful on occasion. I'm sure. I would love to have been a fly on that wall, uh, maybe just for a while, because yeah. that, that campaign went on for a long time. And, and it you, was a hard race. It, yeah. was, it was a mean race. Uh, we'd never seen anything quite like it, but I'm really proud of Sherrod. He stayed on the high road. Um, we had many opportunities where we had to make those decisions, and we always made the right one, and I'm really proud of my husband for that. Talk about yourself as a writer, because you're a feminist, uh, you're a female writer, come from the working class. You've had to change, though, because you you had to leave the plain dealer. You left them temporarily the first time. This time you left them for good. Mm -hmm. uh, that must hurt you in a way because they haven't picked up your column, and, and it's mm -hmm. it's got to be a challenge. This is the big city of Cleveland here for you. It always was, right? It so, is still my town, and right. I, I want to make it clear, I haven't changed. Circumstances of my life have changed That's right. over time, but right. I'm still Connie. And uh, I'm going to be doing some work for Cleveland Magazine now. They've asked me to do some essays for them. Nice. So I'm going to do that because I do love this town. And, right. of course, I write for Parade, and I'm nationally syndicated, and I'm working on a new book. But I still want to be weighing in on local issues in Cleveland because I really care about this region and this town. Well, I hope you do continue to weigh in. Talk about your new book. You're, you're going to do a novel now. Yes, I'm about 40,000 words into it. Wow. Um, it's about a working-class family in Ohio. <laughs> what a surprise. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no, but... but what can you tell us about this? Because you were inspired by your own mother. Yes. And, and my her... mom and my dad. You know, my dad was a utility worker. Mm -hmm. Right. Local 270. Worked at the CEI plant in Ashtabula for 36 years. Right. And my mom went back to work when I was in the, uh, junior in high school to uh, become a nurse's aide and then a hospice home care worker. And uh, I have all of my mom's journals. And I'm mining them for... She wasn't a writer, though. She, but she, she kept, like, a diary, she essentially. Kept, and she really wrote in great detail about her jobs. Mm. So I feel that I'm really able to understand what it means to be a nurse's aide because of the gift from my mother. She had asked me to, to take her journals before she died. She died young. Both my parents did. They died in their 60s. And so I'm really, I'm very grateful for the opportunity to try to tell the story of a working class. There are many stories of the working class. Yes. I am not, I'm telling one. 
And there's not enough, really. Most writers don't uh, really talk about the working class because maybe they don't come from the working class because it's a privileged position to be able to spend how long on a novel. As you say, most uh, most writers right. really don't come from that socioeconomic area. Or you know, education. I hadn't even thought of it that way, but you're right. Most of them who are, have the luxury of doing that, right. and it is a privilege to do a to novel. Be able to do it this. can take years. Yeah. Uh, right. Know, so it's just not a surprise in a way that we don't have these working class dudes that are like, yeah, I'm working on my novel again for... 20 more minutes tonight before I collapse and have to get up and go to work again. Yeah, <laughs> and that's then I've been right. working on it for 17 years. That's right. But I, you know, I can't take credit for the initial idea. It came from my editor at Random House, mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. uh, who took me to lunch five, five years ago. Gave you the courage to and take said, it we, on. The working class is really underrepresented in yeah. modern literature. And yeah. It took me a while to come up with an idea, but I think I've got one now. Well, we can't wait for that. Thank you. Uh, in the meantime, how, how have you changed? How has your feminist views changed I mean, through this? Because you, you addressed it in your first book. But it's been a while since that book's been out now, six years. And I just wonder, you have a very strong feminist. It's who I am. It's who you are. Yeah. How has that, because you've run up against so much reality now, that other people in, in other realms maybe don't have to face as directly as you have in the past few years, how has it affected you? I mean, it's well, made you stronger, obviously. Yeah. But the mantra for my life is no whining on the yacht. I'm really lucky to do what I do right, and right. to be married to whom I'm married to, right. who I'm married to. And um, I think being a feminist, is, it's, it's not even something I have to think about. It's who I am. Mm. And I guess it emboldens me every day. Mm. I, I, I have found that getting older is quite liberating. Yes. <laughs> I feel uh, I don't get distracted by some mm -hmm. of the things that used to drag me down. And I have a real sense of purpose because... Time will run out, and I don't want to waste any of it. You, you really feel that sense, don't you? The clock oh, is yeah. ticking, and you you can do things, but you have to do them now. You have to do it, because I'm 55, and my parents both died in their 60s. I don't know how much time I have. That's <laughs> Talk about, back to politics, Hillary Clinton, your thoughts there. I hope she runs. I don't know if she's going to. I think she needs a rest. Uh, most people who know her well have assured me that that's what she's going to do. She's going to get a break after she uh, leaves as Secretary of State. Um, I don't want anybody to treat her as the presumptive candidate because yeah. I think that's what hurt there her in 08. Are. There yeah. Are, right? yeah, my attitude is this. I hope she runs, and I hope that we can get behind her because I really want to see in my lifetime a woman president, and I can't imagine anyone I'd rather see right now than Hillary. Behind you here, we've got a plain dealer truck, ironically, just uh, mm -hmm. passing us as we talk. Obviously, they're going through a lot right now. Talk about your feelings there about, uh, well, we can give support, but, but it's really a changing world, isn't it, that we live in? You're online. You have, you have 150,000 Facebook friends or something. You've got um, your, your email again. You're at creators.com. For my column. For right. your column. And parades online also. Parades online. So you're very right. much online. But you know what? They world. both, but, what I, but I'm in a lot of print newspapers yet. You still and are. I'm in Parade, which yes. is a print publication. Yeah. And I link to news stories from news organizations all day long on Facebook sure. to get conversations sure. going. I love the plane dealer. Yeah. I love a lot, awful lot of the people who work there. Good people who are really scared right now, really yeah. stressed, yeah. but yeah. they keep showing up and doing the very best job they can do. And that's why I stayed there for so long, because of the people I was working with. Yeah. I admire you, them. You must you feel tell? a real connection with them. My heart is breaking for them. Talk about your dog for a moment. because <laughs> Good, because I was about to cry. You're Franklin! <laughs> Franklin. <laughs> You, you found a, 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 you rescued a dog. Yeah, right? through Paws and Prayers Rescue mm -hmm. in Summit County. Can you tell I love talking about him? Uh, his mother is a 45 pound lab husky. His father is a 14 pound Shih Tzu, a gymnast. And we got him when he was nine weeks old. And he was the second smartest thing I did on the campaign. What was the first smartest? <laughs> I found a little tiny apartment in Columbus oh, to share right. it so that he wouldn't have to stay in hotels. Yeah. And we could be together more and yeah. be with our grandson more. And then there's Franklin, who is. Kept, kept it all together for he you guys, huh? really did we, we, yeah. we everybody who knows me knows i'm a dog lover uh, as are so many americans and we have cats too but he's traveled with us all over the place he's a great little guy and i love watching sherrod sherrod like warmed the, up to him a little bit yeah just a little <laughs> i think when i i wrote this for parade when i watch sherrod with that dog i get to see the nine-year-old boy he mm, once was nice. that's what happens with him with a, which right. is very typical of men i've, I've found mm, with with dogs they just go they, crazy they can't open to people that's but right they but they are to, just little boys little with puppy. those dogs well, we hope to hear your voice uh, about Cleveland and in Cleveland. It's such a valuable voice. You've been such an inspiration to me personally. It's oh, a cool Cleveland. Thank you. And to see that you have now, you're in a position, as you said, a privileged position to really affect the lives of 
not just the state now, really the entire country. Good luck with the fiscal cliff business that's going on now and, and all the nasty campaigning that you went through. I, it's a whole other conversation to go through and talk about what you guys went through with that nasty campaign, but we'll talk about that some other time. We just, you know, we lead with gratitude. We really are grateful, grateful that it's over, grateful that Sherrod won, grateful that so many people had faith in him. And you know what? All the ones who didn't, he's still their senator, too. That's right. Yeah. It's time to come together as a country and do the right thing. That's right. So, and thank you for what you do. You've been doing this for 10 years now? Believe it or not. You love yes. this town. You love the city. <laughs> we, we have that in common. Absolutely. We do. passion. And that's what I've taken from you. I think with you, it's very personal, one-to-one. -one. Yeah. And as it is for us. We interviewed a lot of people. But we love this place, and yes. we understand this place, and we know that this is the heart and soul of America right here. That's right. And that's why we fight so hard for it. Not that it doesn't change. I'm a big believer in change. Well, we both are, yeah. Absolutely. But we stand tall for this town. And I want more and more people to join us and tell their stories about why they love this region, why they love this town, why they're still here. we got to start telling our stories. We do. We don't need any more of these uh, East Coast, West Coast stories, no. Hollywood films, right. New York blockbusters. I'm tired of that. In fact, all those people are from Cleveland anyways originally <laughs> they went to, right. when they were young and they found inspiration in, in the coasts. We need to tell our own story. It's the only way we can understand who we are as human beings. That's exactly right. And you and I, we're here on purpose. And there are a lot of people like us, and we need to explain why. Thank you so much for taking time. Thanks. Great hearing you today. Thank Good you. luck with your novel. Thank you. Talk to us again next time you're in Cleveland. I will. Thanks. <laughs> Thanks for talking, okay. Connie. Thank you. <laughs> hey, it's Thomas Mulready from CoolCleveland.com. Have a great week in Cool Cleveland.